What's up guys, Jacob from Fuel Tech USA, and today we're gonna to go over everything you need to know about setting up flex fuel on your Power FT ECU. Before we get on the computer and I show you how to do it on there, you guys do need a ethanol content sensor. It's something we sell. It's 12 volt power, sensor ground, and an input. It's usually in the return side of the fuel system, not the feed side, so it's not as big of a restriction. If you do have something big power, you need a big return. They make some nice adapter stuff that it'll go in line with the flex fuel and feed it and also go around it. But we covered that. Let's get on the computer and I'll show you guys how to set that up. All right, guys. So hopping on the computer side here, I have one of our LS550 base maps and we're going to first go to map options, turn on flex fuel. Before we do any configuring here, this is gonna be an important step for you guys. Let's go to fuel injection first. Let's make sure our primary total flow is correct for the fuel pressure we're running. So we're gonna do this like we have our 170 injectors and we're running 60 pounds of fuel pressure so if we go and look at our chart and the manual, you can pull it up online. At 60 pounds of fuel pressure, they flow 204 pounds an hour each. So the way we get this primary total flow is however many injectors you have, four cylinder, eight cylinder, whatever. We're gonna do this like a V8. So 204 times eight, it is 1,632 pounds an hour. And for the flex fuel stuff, as much compensation as we do, we need to really get our battery offset table correct. So this primary injector is dead time. We're gonna set this as zero. Then we'll go up to fuel injection, battery voltage compensation. We're gonna put in our dead time table, also available in the manual online. We're gonna look at 60 pounds base pressure, so looking at our dead time table, the 60 PSI column. First, we're going to edit this axis. We're going to put the same stuff we have there. We got 10, 12 volts, 13, 14, and 16. Basically, just copy that info right in here. So what this is going to do is, depending where you're at battery voltage wise, it's always going to be adding this amount of milliseconds in the background. So when you totally fill this table out like this, your fuel table, when you get the car running, tuned in good, it may be way smaller numbers than you're used to seeing. So just kind of to show you, we're going to do, let's say 14 volts, it's adding 1.17 milliseconds in the background. You could be pretty close with this if you just add and take away 1.17 milliseconds everywhere. This should be pretty close to running the same as you were before. You'll notice you have really small numbers down here, stuff we wouldn't normally see, but since we're adding that dead time in the background all the time, this is just how much over the dead time we're adding fuel. This is really a more accurate number for this. So we're gonna go down to flex fuel. Default blend in case of an error. I always tell guys set this up for what are you gonna run in the car most of the time? Are you gonna have pump gas most of the time or is it gonna be E85 most of the time? I'm gonna do everything here based on, we, we're primarily running E85. This is just, we just have the flex fuel sensor to help us out if we're somewhere we can't get it, drag and drive event. It's not available everywhere. These are both kind of safeguards for it doing too much too fast. Like we're, we're going to discard the reading during engine start. We're only going to check it during the fuel pump priming. That way we're not making some huge swing in fuel right in the middle of engine start. We have a nice consistent number we're working with. Same thing here, discard reading with high load. That way when we're full throttle, like we have a lot of 
fuel we're bypassing is coming through the flex fuel sensor, it sometimes can affect the reading. So we're only going to look at below 2,500 RPM to ever change the number on our flex fuel sensor. So you could either manually edit some of these tables. I normally like it's it's kind of a kind of a shortcut here. We can do flex fuel setup wizard. All of the tables will be erased and redefined with a default calibration, depending whatever we're going to tell it, we run most of the time. So are you sure? We're going to say yes. Same thing. We're primarily running E85. We're going to put in 85%. So what this does is it's going to go ahead and every, every table here, the 85% mark, we're not doing any compensation. This is where we're mainly going to run. So even fuel injection, engine start, everything, it's already going to be zeroed out. If for some reason you get some really good fuel and you have more than 85%, it's going to start adding up to 10% there if it's fully E100. And then if we're down here in regular pump gas range, 10, this is in between 10 and 40. This is kind of a big jump. We can edit this. Somewhere in here, it's going to have roughly 20, 24% of fuel out. If we're even less than that, like we got some E15, something like that, there's 30% of fuel out of it. This is honestly a good baseline to start with, and you can tune in from here. Your engine start fuel, it's usually a little more drastic on the changes. Generally, the more ethanol content you have, the more fuel you need to start it. It's almost like a, like a bell curve. So see 85 to 75 isn't a huge jump, but 85 to 10 is. And then even after the 85, if we just have a little bit more, we need a ton more fuel cranking. Excel enrichment, it's, it's kind of a big one. It's almost in between the main fuel injection and the engine start, the amount that it's going to add or take away depending on ethanol content. So this table, O2 closed loop target compensation, this is just going to affect our closed loop target at any time depending on ethanol content this honestly AFR you, you can kind of get away with most guys use gas scale even on E85 the probably better way to do this would be lambda if you guys want to change to lambda you would go file options and you can change it here lambda and it will change all of your O2 targets everything to a lambda number Main ignition compensation, this is just saying, okay, depending on the amount of ethanol I have, I want to do this with timing. We're zeroed out at 85. We're primarily running E85. If if it were me, I would probably not even add any more for the 100% there. And then, okay, if we do get out somewhere, we have to get some something right out of the pump, E10, E15, something like that. There's a lot of timing out, 4.5 degrees, something like that. Usually the drag and drive guys, you're not beating on the car anyways you're just trying to get to the next place so sometimes i might even go five six degrees out down here just to be super safe cruising and not not really have to worry about it and all of these tables this is just reference numbers this is something that's going to get you in the ballpark the best way to go about this would be to dyno with your E85, really dial the car in. And then if you can, try to blend and get somewhere in the middle, maybe E50, E40, something like that. And then go straight down to a right out of the pump, regular 10, 15% ethanol. Because th this is just a, just a ballpark number. You may end up taking a little more out. It may run better that way on the regular pump gas. You may add a little more there, but this is all, this is going to get you in the ballpark. You could put this in the car and run it, but it's going to take some dialing in. Every car is different the way they're going to react to running a little leaner, running a little richer. Some stuff's more picky. Like if you have something like really efficient, like a four valve head overhead cam, like a Coyote or a K series or something, they're going to tend to run leaner and like it. Where if you got something, I don't know, like an LS or a small block Ford, they're typically going to be on the richer side. Like they don't want to run around at 14.7 air fuel. They want to cruise around at like 
So keep that in mind. This is just a guideline to get you guys going. And one more thing to show you guys here. Let's go to map options. If we're using some stuff like a boost control, let's we'll say wastegate boost control, or a lot of people use generic duty cycle for just a basic Mac valve, some open loop boost control. We'll hit confirm, turn those options on. We can even give it some compensations based on ethanol content, like okay, E85, that's my that's my base, right? Then at 10% ethanol, I'm gonna have eight pounds off the gate. And I mean, we could just interpolate right over there. The 85 E100, we'll leave it flat. If there's no ethanol in this thing, we'll say, take 10 pounds off the gate. This is a CO2 base boost control. Generic duty cycle, same kind of way. It's just a PWM percentage. The 85, that's our base. We don't add any for 100. You can, but I, I prefer not to. And then let's say all the way down at 10% of ethanol, we're going to say take 40% of duty cycle away from this thing. If we have none at all, we can even go a little steeper, 60%. But this is one more cool compensation built into the flex fuel. It's, it's pretty well rounded, and it's not bad to get going, especially when you just use the flex fuel setup wizard there. So that pretty much covers everything you guys need to know about setting up flex fuel on FT Manager. If you guys still have questions, reach out to me or any of the other tech guys. We can help you out with it. Of course, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, uh, give us some more ideas, something you guys want to see for Tech Tuesday. And we'll see you next Tuesday.